This is my 1999 Specialized Hard Rock, or at least it was when I first got it for $25. And this is it when I built it up as a towny cruiser type thing. One of the reasons why people like disc brakes is because wind brakes just don't work in the wet. So you ride through a puddle and then your brakes don't do anything and you certainly can't skid. Okay, so that old argument is pretty silly. But disc brakes do have an advantage through water and mud. Regardless of what people say, you should just do whatever you want to do with your own bike. I'm not going to convince you to do it one way or the other. This is just the build of how I did it. Basically because I just really wanted to try disc brakes on an old mountain bike. I got my frame modified by the best, Jeff of Jesson Bikes. The rear brake cost $200 for the tab and then the build climbed up to around $800 pretty quickly. I definitely could have done it for cheaper but I splash out on a few little pits and bobs. Some things I built myself, some things were new. So let's get into it. Starting from disassembly when it was a cruiser. This was quite a few months ago. I had a bit of time um, first taking it down to Jefferson to get it modified and then I spent some time collecting parts, sort of feeling out which way I wanted the build to go into. So I had built it up from the frame up, so everything came apart pretty easily. Um, no, nothing was stuck, the stem wasn't stuck, bottom bracket wasn't stuck. Um, so I just cut the cables off, because I wasn't going to need those. And nothing else had started corroding, so it was really quite a straightforward disassembly. So once it was all disassembled, it was time to take it down to Jeff. Now I don't have any video from taking it down to him, so I'm just going to do a quick snap. And here it is all done from him. So I didn't want to have it all painted or anything. I was just going to clean it up and then clear coat it. So I wanted it this way mainly because I liked the braised effect and a bit of the patina. It, it has a little bit more character this way. The original brake tabs were cut off and then ground flat. From here, the frame had a little bit of work to do to make sure that the paint would stick properly. There was some damaged paint and some little bits of flux that I needed to remove just to make sure that the paint would stick properly so the frame would last as long as possible without rust developing and eating through it. conversion. There is this brace here which does have a drain hole in it and then I actually drilled and tapped this so I still have a rear eyelet to match up with the old one. As you can see there, boom.
So I've prepped most of it just with scotch pads and it left a really nice finish to be clear coated over. Some of the flux came off pretty easily just by sort of chipping away at it. And some of the other parts, they needed a little bit of soaking just with a wet paper towel, but it didn't take too long to get it to the point that I was happy with. Right, so the clear coat. This is one cable guide that Jeff, um, I guess he just missed that sort of thing happened. So I just went over it and filed it smooth just to make it a little bit nicer and it's not going to cause me any issues later on. So now it's just the quick last final wipe down to get rid of all any residue that I used for cleaning. One of the really good parts about this. There are lots of products like this. Uh, this is just the one that I have locally and it's worked great for me. It's basically just a rust treatment that I normally put inside of frames, but it works great on the outside too. So I sprayed that on before I did the clear coat. I wasn't too concerned with this. I didn't really want like a hard line of the clear coat because it goes into a glossy paint. So it would have been a lot more obvious if I did mask it off. So I thought I'd just feather it a little bit. And I'm glad I did it that way because it looks really nice and it looks like really seamless. So I'll go over the parts pretty quickly. Disc fork, pretty standard. It's a one and one eight stereo tube. Dropper post, not necessary. And then the shim to make it fit my frame. So this is a 27.2 dropper post and then it goes up to a 30.4 for the 99 hard rock. That's just the cable for the dropper post, grip, stem, seat, bars, the narrow wide chain ring, and stickers optional, and then disc brakes. So the thumb is quite nice. This is my first pull component part, pull component. So some of the things that are kind of variables depending on which brakes you go for. Um, so adapters and all just the little bolts and stuff that you don't have from like a non-disc bike. But, um, so I'm just going with ceram level T's, nothing too fancy, but they'll do the trick. So this is the shifter setup that I went with. I really like friction shifting, so I wanted to go for this route mainly just to keep along with that. Um, I'm not really gonna need to shift really quickly in any situation. Um, it'll be fine for off-road. I'm not gonna do any downhill racing or anything like that, so that's fine. So the Paul Thummy is a really nice part. I do have a couple of gripes with it though. One being that I don't know why they didn't just use recessed nuts as the thread. Um, so the thread is in the body of it, so if you do manage to strip a thread, then the whole part is pretty much gone. And the other thing is that the bolt that came with it wasn't long enough for my shifter. I don't know if that's an issue just with the 10-speed ones, but eh, that's what I ran into. And these are the wheels. So the front I built up with that 27.5 rim, and the rear is just a 26-inch specialized wheel that I had sitting around, just a 9-speed. And the front runs a 2.1 inch tire, but I'll put the parts list in the description below so you can check that out anytime. I've got a whole long video of doing the polishing of these cranks. So I did it by hand, I did it up to 5000 grit. This is the end result, it looks really nice, although it does take a really long time. Paint 
So these handlebars are from a motorbike originally. Uh, they come in a 7 8 or 22.2 millimeter clamp diameter. I've tried a few different types and these are the ones that I like the most. They've got a little bit of back sweep and upseat to make them nice and comfortable. Which is kind of bullshit. I don't want to have to get new clamps so I might just cut them off if I get sick of them. I'm also going to take that out because that will just rattle around. But for now, just setting it up, it's just going to stay. And I'm not going to have the brakes attached because... So I know I'm going to have to bleed these brakes so everything's going up loosely and I'm doing things in an order that it's going to benefit me the most. Be, and then And then bleed them and then keep going from there. Firing this on through, it's going to end up there. Loose enough. Yeah, it's not gonna... So the bleed block that came in the kit was a little bit soft, so I got stuck, kind of. So with the brakes bled, um, install is pretty easy. You just leave the caliper loose, put the wheel in, and then when you cut, when you squeeze the lever, the brakes will s sort of center itself, and then you just gradually tighten down the caliper bolts. Then just spin the wheel a little bit, just to make sure that the brake isn't dragging. One of the biggest ongoing problems that I have, and probably a lot of people have with disc brakes, are that they're really fragile. So get used to trying disc rotors, because that's something that you'll always have to fight with. <laughs> limit oh no before this <laughs> you see what the train the train the 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 So I put three chain ring bolts on just to make sure that the chain ring would line up with the center of the cassette, which it did. So I cinched it down fully before adjusting the chain length. You're doing a really good service, so thank you. have any pedals for this build. Put off. It's pretty common to miss one thing when you're building up a bike, so I'm pretty glad that I picked these up from Darcy.
into the pole. So that just comes. So when I first started pedaling, I noticed that the chain was rubbing. Um, it was coming into contact with the rear derailleur cage, so it was in the wrong, wrong position. So I had to pull the lower jockey wheel out to get the chain out and put it in the right spot, because there was no quick link in this chain. I just routed the cable incorrectly, as you can see there, so normally it goes through here. But by routing it to the opposite side of the bolt, it changes the pull ratio, effectively. So now it pulls the cable, it pulls the derailleur more than what it would without doing that mod. So that's quite a common mod um, with using road shifters on the front mountain bike derailleur. So I figured it's worth a try and sure enough it works. So now that the shifter is pulling more cable, it can fully engage the lowest gear on the rear cassette. This is what I normally use, which crimps them pretty well, and I've actually made this end into a quick link remover. Oh, that is too cool. Too cool. Too cool. Just throw a little bit of B limit at it. Let's see. Yeah, with the steel frame, you want some frame vents so the moisture can get out. I think. Um, can you hear that? Because condensation will always form. From, so from the interior or the exterior being different temperatures as to vice versa, condensation will happen. It's inevitable. So you want frame vents to let that moisture out. Otherwise you'll get internal rust, which sucks. So to solve that problem, instead of drilling a hole in the frame, I just used a bolt that was basically a barrel adjuster. So it had a hole through that I could use in the bottle cage. Position and angle and find the hole. Is that right? Oh, I don't see a little cut. Before the first ride I just tidied up some of the cables, then the last thing to do was to put the grips on. These are ESI chunky grips. And they're pretty tough to put on but I really like using them so I go through that struggle. Cable management, yeah.
When putting on non-lock on grips, I measure them just to make sure that I put them to the right length because you can screw it up by uh, a few millimeters if you're not careful. And then it was all done. Time for me to ride it. I chucked some lights on it quickly and took it out that first night. I was just too excited. So I'm, I'm so stoked with how it came out. This is by far my favorite build that I've done, um, from the ground up anyway. I really like my Kona Unit X, but this is, it's special. It's, I've had this for a while, probably only a couple of years now, but I've grown really fond of this frame, even though it is just a hard rock. Um, I, I love it, I love it so much. And that's it. So the rest of the video will be riding footage. So I was actually really happy with how it's uh, wheelied. I'm not great at wheeling, but this bike, it, it tilted back really nicely but going up hills it, it didn't want to leave the front too easily so it's quite a nice balance of wheelieable but it's still climb really nicely so long term there will be a few changes to this bike so first off it'll probably be the tires i'll change those to something a bit more road suitable that'll be sort of short term and then longer term i was planning on converting it to drop bar I'll <laughs> so these are some clips from a local cyclocross event that was open to all bikes. So there's no restrictions on tire size. It was a really chill event. Everyone was really friendly and it was really great to take the bike out. So I definitely recommend uh, an event like this if you have one near you. Just go along, have some fun, meet some people, take your bike out, <laughs> play around in the mud. I'd definitely do the next one.
<laughs> Chain ring ain't that a bit? Yeah. Oh, I'll take him now. <laughs> the arrow suck. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be muddy soon. <laughs> Chain ring ain't that a bit? Yeah. <laughs> Getting slick. <laughs> Hey. Oh yeah. 